Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the evaluation homomorphism for polynomial rings. Okay, so in this next video, what I want to do is push this a little bit further. Okay, so what we've now agreed then is that this mapping, which I'll go back to calling phi sub alpha here, the evaluation homomorphism at the value alpha, from the ring of polynomials with coefficients in the ring capital R to the coefficient ring capital R is indeed a ring homomorphism. Okay, what I now want to do is slightly generalize it, okay, to a slightly more difficult to understand case, but a really important to understand case. As I said at the end of the previous video, this concept becomes really important in basic field theory. Okay, so what I now want you to consider is, let's say S is a subring of my ring capital R. Okay, so it's a subring of my coefficient ring. So just drawing a basic picture then, uh, here is my entire ring capital R. And what colour have I previously shown R in? I'll share it in green, so I'll maintain that. So I'll share it in green here. Okay, so this box represents all of the elements in my coefficient ring, capital R, and now uh, we're looking at a subset of this, which I'll call capital S here, okay, which is a subring of the ring, capital R. Okay, so I'll show this in orange here. Okay, right. Um, now, a subring, remember, is a subset that, with the restricted addition and multiplication law from the larger ring, capital R, uh, is a ring in its own right. Now, here comes the interesting thing. Because it's a ring in its own right, you can quite happily consider the ring of polynomials over uh, the subring, capital S here. Okay, it's a ring in its own right, so you can certainly generate uh, its ring of polynomials. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But of course, the interesting thing about this is that the ring of polynomials over this subring, capital S, is of course going to be a subring of the uh, ring of polynomials with coefficients in the ring, capital R. And I know uh, this is just is a subset of symbol. It's because there isn't really uh, a symbol that everyone agrees on to use for is a subring of. Okay, so I'm just using is a subset of, but I'm saying is a subring of. Okay, so the ring of polynomials over the subring capital S is going to be a subset of the ring of polynomials uh, with coefficients in the ring capital R. Now, why is that? Well, any polynomial that's in here is just going to have coefficients from the subring capital S. All of those coefficients are in the actual ring capital R. This picture they evidently shows that. So, of course, all of those polynomials are going to be in the ring of polynomials with coefficients in the ring capital R. Okay. In addition, it's going to be a ring in its own right, so it's a subset which is a ring in its own right. All that we need to agree on is that the actual addition and multiplication laws on here uh, are just the addition and multiplication laws on here restricted down. Well, of course that's going to be the case, because the way we'll define addition and multiplication uh, in here will be dependent on addition and multiplication in S, and of course addition and multiplication in S are just the restricted versions of addition and multiplication in R restricted down to this subset. So I, it's not too much of a stretch to understand that this truly, its addition and multiplication laws are just the restricted addition and multiplication laws on here to that subset. So indeed it is a subset with restricted and addition and multiplication laws uh, from here on it, and we know it's a ring in its own right, therefore uh, it must be a subring. Okay, so, uh, that's not the interesting thing, though. The interesting thing is to now consider the evaluation homomorphism, which will evaluate the polynomials in here. Okay, so we're going to evaluate the polynomials in this ring of polynomials uh, over uh, the subring, capital S. But, instead of picking alpha that's in S, let's pick alpha that's outside of S. So let's suppose alpha is in the larger ring, but it's outside of S, so it's in the portion of the larger ring that is not inside, well, which is not S. Okay, so it's in this complement of S, basically, here. Okay, now that's something that you couldn't previously do. Okay, when we were just talking about a single ring at capital R, and we're taking the ring of polynomials over that ring, capital R, okay, of course we couldn't talk about having an alpha that was outside of capital R. That's why we're pushing it now. Okay, we're now going to evaluate these polynomials using some element that's outside of the coefficient ring. Okay, and I should just stress, there's a point that I haven't stressed uh, enough, okay, I do not 
intend you to pick the zero sub ring. Okay, so this is not the zero ring. Okay, of course, if you pick the zero ring, that is a sub ring, but the, the ring of polynomials over that zero ring is very boring. Okay, it's just the zero ring back again. So I intend you not to pick the zero ring, it's just too boring there. And the other thing to stress is that, of course, uh, if the um, this ring, capital R, the larger ring, is a commutative ring, a uh, non-zero commutative ring, uh, then this ring that we've ended up with here, this subring, will also be a commutative ring. So this subring then is going to be a non-zero commutative ring, so it's perfectly valid to generate the ring of polynomials over that. Okay, so that's just a little bit of technicalities that I forgot earlier and I'm just uh, bringing back up now. So let's get back to what we were discussing, the more interesting bit, which is now suddenly we can talk about evaluating polynomials um, in the ring of polynomials over a certain ring, this ring S, and we're evaluating them as an element that actually isn't in the coefficient ring. Okay, but this makes perfect sense because, of course, uh, this is just a subring of R adjoin X, and of course we can easily evaluate polynomials there at alpha. Okay, so this does still make sense. So now, where are the elements going to be taken? Okay, well, it will work just exactly as it did before. We're now just going to stick alpha in where x is. Okay, but now, where are the elements going to end up? They're not going to end up in S anymore. They're going to end up in the ring capital R. Okay, so this is actually going to be a mapping from the ring of polynomials over that subring into the ring of polynomials, the larger, sorry, into the larger coefficient ring, capital R, okay? Right, and it will just send a polynomial onto the polynomial evaluator, the alpha. Now, of course, all polynomials will go into here because all polynomials, when evaluated at alpha, they're just going to be sums of elements of the subring S multiplied with powers of alpha, which is in R. Okay, so everything that we're talking about there is in R, so it's just adding and multiplying elements of R, so of course you will end up with elements in R. Okay, so this is going to be a mapping from the ring of polynomials over that subring into the ring capital R. Okay, what I want to convince you of is that this is still a ring homomorphism. Okay, and this is quite easy to show that it's a ring homomorphism. We've established that it's a mapping from here to here. Okay, all we need to make sure of now is additive compatibility, multiplicative compatibility, and that the multiplicative identity will go into the multiplicative identity over here. Okay, well, this is, as I say, really easy because this is, after all, just a subring of here of the ring of polynomials R adjoin X here. Okay, and this mapping we perfectly understand is a ring homomorphism if you're actually looking at this full domain here, this full ring of polynomials here. But if you think about it, if you took any two polynomials here, okay, and put them into this additive compatibility uh, e equation here, it, they would have to satisfy it because they satisfy it when we're looking at the map here. Okay, if they didn't satisfy it here, they wouldn't satisfy it here, and therefore this wouldn't have been a homomorphism. So because this is a homomorphism, additive compatibility and indeed also multiplicative compatibility have to be true when you just restrict the homomorphism down, because that's all we're really doing here. We're just restricting our attention down from the larger domain here to a smaller domain here. So if I draw a picture of this, here is the uh, large ring of polynomials, R adjoin X here, and then we've got the sub ring here, which is S adjoin X, okay, and then we've got this homomorphism, phi evaluated alpha, which is taking us into the ring capital R over here. That's the picture we've got here, okay, and we know that the this mapping uh, is a homomorphism when defined on the entire thing, a Bayes additive compatibility, multiplicative compatibility, uh, and the fact that the multiplicative identity is mapped onto the multiplicative identity. Okay, my question to you is, it, is, is it possible that when we restrict the homomorphism down just to this subset here, S join X, that suddenly additive compatibility and multiplicative compatibility break? Well, of course it's not, okay? If any two polynomials in this subset here didn't obey additive compatibility and multiplicative compatibility in this restricted map, then they wouldn't obey it in the larger map. Okay, and that's why we know that additive and multiplicative compatibility must be true uh, in this uh, homomorphism here.
or in this mapping, homomorphism to B. Okay, so additive and multiplicative compatibility are easy. And again, finally, the final one, where does the multiplicative identity in here go? Well, of course, it's just going to go to the multiplicative identity because all constant polynomials are just mapped onto themselves. Okay, and of course, the multiplicative identity must have been in S, okay, because it was a subring. Okay, so that's fine. All of the uh, constant polynomials in here just go on to themselves in S. Okay, so the multiplicative identity will go on to the multiplicative identity. So indeed, this is a ring homomorphism, and it's an important one to get familiar with now. Because as I say, when you go into field theory, you're always talking about having a, a field extension of another field, and you quite often want to think about um, evaluating polynomials over a field with an element uh, that's in a field extension, okay? So this is uh, something that becomes very important, so it's good to get familiar with it early on. Okay, the final thing to say is just a little bit of terminology, okay? It might not be the case that if we look at the image of this homomorphism here from the um, subring adjoin X, the ring of polynomials over the subring, into the ring capital R, that it is subjective. It might be the case that when we evaluate all of these polynomials at alpha, we don't actually get all of the elements of R, so it might just go on to a subset here, okay, like so. That subset, the image of this homomorphism, so the image of phi evaluated at alpha, in this case where we're restricting our attention down to the ring of polynomials over that subring uh, S, uh, this has a special name. It's usually denoted S and then you put square brackets like so, and you put alpha like so. So that's what this S square brackets alpha actually means. It means, okay, look at all of these polynomials in this ring of polynomials over the subring capital S, okay? Evaluate them all at this element alpha, where alpha is some element outside of the subring S, okay? Collect all of the elements in the larger ring capital R that are of that form, and that subring, because we know it will be a subring because the image of a homomorphism, a ring homomorphism, is always a subring. That subring is what we denote S square brackets alpha in that way. Again, that's a, a piece of notation that you see all the time in field theory, so it's well worth uh, being aware of it and being used to it now. Okay, so it just means evaluate all of the polynomials at an element and collect together the subring of all of the answers that you can get to by evaluating a polynomial at alpha. Okay, and with that we will end this video on the evaluation homomorphism for polynomial rings.